the visions of the throne was that driving force that drove the Lord throughout his earthly ministry. The vision of the throne was the wheel on which the zeal of the Lord was born. In. Jesus said, the zeal of my father's house has eaten me up. Indeed, the zeal of the house of God ate the heart of the Christ because the love of God was driving him. Because wielding authority was also driving him. Because fellowship with God was driving him. And also because anticipation for the day of reward was also driving him. This is the part two of this series on the visions of the throne. And when I began talking about these visions of the throne yesterday, some persons assumed that probably I wanted to start sharing divine revelations of what is happening in heaven and some mystical experiences. No, that's not why we are here. We are here for something that is greater than revelations that come by dreams. We are here for the revelation that is better by the word of God. Of the truth, we are in that age today that uh, many types of revelation have been flooding um, the internet and all of that, flooding the body of Christ. Many types of revelations that have even come out from familiar spirits, putting many people into bondage. But that's not why we are here. We are here on the ages of the revelation of the word of God. The visions of the throne was driving the heart of the Christ. Driving the heart of the Christ. Anyone that has begun this series from the part one, what the series is meant to do is to change your mindset, to change the reason for your pursuit. And I make it bold to say that any man that is running with any of these wheels, any singular one of these wheels is not enough. Running with one of these four wheels is not enough. The man must run with all to make it corporate and more strengthened. There are many people that say they are serving God because of the love of God. Because they just love God. And I've seen many of such people that make emphasis that they so much love God. God loves them. Oh, I'm in love with God. And I find that, that many of such people become liberal. Liberal. There are this set of people that say, you know, um, uh, reckless love. That I'm, I'm experiencing the reckless love of God. Where God does not have reckless love. The love of God ca cannot be reckless. The love of God is intentional. It is not reckless. There are many whom God has loved and they ended up in hell. Matter of fact, God loves all his creations. God created man, created everything and saw that it was good. So there is no one you can say that, that, that God loves this one, God does not love this one. So that theology of reckless love is invalid according to scripture. God's love is rather intentional. So, for those people that run on the wheel of love alone, love alone, saying they love God alone and God loves them and not having the order of these wheels at the back of their mind, some of them become liberal. Some of them become nonchalant about the issues that pertain to the judgment. They become carefree with the ordinances of God, believing that as long as they err, God forgives immediately. So they begin to take God for a ride. They begin to become over familiar with divine one. I mean those that say it is only the love of God that drives them. It is important that the love of God drives them. Why we are here today is to actually create a balance. And the reason for this balance is so that when you are running you may be able to run well. The four wheels on the visions of the throne is law. There is authority, there is fellowship, and there is reward. So, those set of people that so much emphasize the love of God, you see them licentious. You see them as liberal. You see them begin to live anyhow they like, believing that, oh, God is a merciful God. Where they don't know that the same God that is a merciful God 
is still the same God that is the God of justice. They only know the mercy part of God and they fail to recognize the justice side of God. God is merciful. God is just. All of these are the attributes of God. And when God shows his justice, he is God. When he shows his mercy, he is God. So a man that runs on the wheel of love alone may not run well. It's important that the man runs with his four wheels and there will be a balance. On the visions of the throne, I will let you know that the person of the Christ desire to walk in authority. Many people do not know that. That Jesus himself desired to walk in authority while he was on earth. If you read Luke chapter 4 from verse 5 to 6, you see where Satan presented to Jesus and told him very clear that look at the kingdoms of this world and all of this that you see, I will give it to you. It has been delivered unto me and to whom I will, I give. So, before Satan could come to Jesus telling him that, it meant that he knew that Jesus desired to walk in authority. The first temptation was to turn stone to bread because he knew that Jesus was hungry and he needed bread. So the devil does not tempt a man with fish when the man loves meat. The devil will come to you according to what you desire. The book of James said we are all tempted according to our lust. Satan cannot see that the man loves money, that a man is driven by the spirit of mammon, that the man is so covetous and the devil will now come to tempt the man with something else that is not money. He knows the password of most people. So Satan knew that Jesus so much craved, so much desire to walk in authority in order to bring men to liberty because it was written of him that the spirit of the Lord is upon him to set that there are captives to be set free. So you can't set captives free without authority. You can't bind the strong man without authority. So the devil knew all that Jesus, all that Jesus, all that Jesus desired in the flesh and he came tempting him according to those things he desired so the christ desired to walk in authority because he knew that many people were bound and jesus saw a woman for 18 years the woman was bound and jesus cried out and said oh no that is the daughter of abraham be loose from my infirmity wherein she is bound this 18 years and Jesus went about Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed by the devil for God was with him he went, his ministry was all about going and doing good Luke chapter 1 he said of all Jesus began to teach and to do so he knew that the Christ needed authority so he now offered him authority to say that all this has been delivered to me the legality for dominion over earth has been delivered to him by adam through original sin and now the devil is saying to jesus this i will give to you why did jesus go to fast the bible said the spirit of the lord drove him to the wilderness and jesus returned in the spirit and the power of god he returned in authority he returned with the mantle so it is good that you also run the race not only with love you also run the race desiring the authority of god to be in oppression in your in your vessel so that you can be able to bind devils so that you can be able to cast out demons so that you can be able to stop the works of the devil to set free the captives how could jesus have fulfilled the earthly ministry without authority it would have been, been impossible how could he I've done all that he did without authority. The lame that began to walk, the blind that began to see, the deaf ears that were open, the lepers that were cleansed, all of that was fulfilled because the Christ exercised exousia. And the authority did not end with him. In Matthew chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, you see that Jesus called 70 and gave them authority over devils in matthew chapter 10 he called the 12 disciples and gave them authority then in luke chapter 10 if you read from verse 17 down the 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 70 came to him and said master even the devils were subject to us the devils were subject to us because of the authority you gave to us and jesus said i saw satan fall as lightning from heaven they rejoiced not 
that this devil has sold it unto you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And the Bible says Jesus rejoiced in his spirit. Luke chapter 10, 17 to 19. Jesus rejoiced in his spirit, knowing that his own had begun to walk in authority. So we shouldn't do this work of the kingdom without desiring of without desiring authority to walk in authority and dominion. Because the mandate God gave to man is even a dominion mandate. He said, have dominion over the earth. Over every living creature. Every believer out there needs to desire authority. If you desire authority, it will drive you more to the place of prayer. It will drive you more to the secret place. It will drive you more to fast. It will drive you more to stay with God and contact that virtue and power. Jesus often withdrew himself to the wilderness in order to seek the face of God. And in seeking the face of God, virtue rubs on him. The woman with the issue of blood touched him and he said, who touched me for virtue has left me. So if virtue leaves him, he needs to go back to the secret place to refill himself. Because there is that which is called the depletion of the anointing. When the anointing is depleted, the man goes back to refuel himself in the presence of God. Through prayer, through meditation, through waiting on God, through fasting. Love is a driving force. Love must be a driving force for you in the kingdom. Authority should likewise be a driving force. If your authority is not also a driving force, you will walk a powerless Christian walk. You will be among the category of believers that will be sleeping and demons are sitting on your head. Authority should drive you to prayer. Love alone is not enough. I know many people that have run with love alone and they did not end well. Because they took God for granted. Because they took the, 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 the commands of God for granted. Because they began to see God like their age mates. Love is a driving force for us. Authority is a driving force. Fellowship is a driving force. Sometimes you go to the secret place, not because of anything, not because you even need power to cast out devils, but because you want to fellowship with him, spirit to spirit. From John chapter 4, verse 24, the word of the Lord said very clearly that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you read from verse 23 of that John chapter 4, you see that the hour has come. The hour has come and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for thought such does he seek. That is God is seeking. In Matthew 7, 7, the scripture says, ask you shall receive. Seek you shall find. Knock the door shall be opened. But now in John 4, verses 23 and 24, we are seeing that God is now seeking. Man is seeking. God is now seeking. What is God seeking? There was a vacancy declared in heaven. Angels have their ranking. Lucifer was the head, was the principal angel in charge of anything pertaining to worship. Gabriel was the one in charge as the herald. The herald that runs the errand. All the manifest, all the appearances of God in delivering messages. God only sends Gabriel. To Zachariah, when John was to be born, Gabriel came. To Daniel, when the delivery of his answers came, it was Gabriel. Concerning Israel. To Mary, when Jesus was to be born, to Mary and Joseph, it was Gabriel. Gabriel is the one in charge of message. And then Michael is the one in charge of welfare. They were ministries in heaven. And Lucifer fell. He lost his estates. He lost his bishopric like Judas, as it was written in Acts chapter 1, as Judas lost his bishopric. And then, because Lucifer has lost and declared a place vacant, God is now saying, the scripture is now saying in John 4 verse 23, God is seeking, seeking, they that will worship in spirit and in truth. Because it's not that Lucifer can no more worship God. He can worship. But he cannot worship God in spirit and in truth. Lucifer can. There is no. Uh, you, 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 you don't know a more anointed singer than Lucifer. You have not met any. Read Ezekiel chapter, chapter 28. You see very clearly that in, in, his, to, in, in his throat is like a pipe. There is a, 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 an impute trumpet in the throat of the Lucifer. Of Lucifer. The guy could so sing to touch the heart of God. That God made him the anointed cherub that covered it. The one that walked in the, on the stones of fire. The one that was made perfect in wisdom. And his beauty corrupted him. What am I saying? God is seeking fellowship. Intimacy. 
koinonia god is seeking people that will come and rub minds with him so most times you go to the secret place it's not just because you love um, god alone it's not just because you desire authority alone but it is because you want to fellowship with him you want to relate with him you can't be in love with a girl and not be calling the girl on the phone you can't be in love with someone and not be calling with the person on the phone love communicates so in the fellowship in the fellowship you know when i talk about you should not be in love with a girl and not be we just need to be careful let me make that em emphasis most of these people that are doing these relationships that are airing airing their destinies many of you need to cut off some useless relationships any relationship you know that is leading you to sin you need to cut it off stop praying about it cut it off stop praying about it god we're not here cut it off cut it off i don't know there is someone the lord is putting his body on my heart the person is going to be listening to this message lord the lord is saying you have prayed enough cut it off because if you continue you will keep sinning cut it off that's the message of god before i continue i pray the lord uh, grants you grace to receive this message so what i'm saying in essence is that fellowship is a driving force oneness and john spoke in john chapter one john the beloved in first john chapter one he said this eternal life that we are talking about we have handled it we have touched it we have seen it we we are not telling you fairy tales we are not telling you something we have not handled this life we have fellowship with him fellowship is a driving force on the visions of the throne we need to take fellowship seriously and then commit rewards beloved I, I i would like you to take this serious i would like you to take this as a body and introspect and see why you are still in this kingdom look at the reasons and if the reasons does not suffice i would like you to also imbibe these four levers add them see that you are running this race because of love see that you are running this race because of fellowship see that you're running this race because of authority see that you're also running this race because of rewards first john chapter 4 verse 19 and john the beloved said we have loved him because he first loved us love was a driving force for the christ we love him because he first loved us look for five to six Jesus desired authority. So Satan told him, I will give you this authority and all of that and all of that. Jesus said, so we ought to also desire authority. But Jesus got his authority through legal means. There are many young people in the ministry today that do ministry. And they desire authority over demons and all of that. And yet they go to Satan to give them authority, to give them power. They go to Satan to give them power to prophesy. Go to Satan to give them power to heal the sick. And yet, yes, they heal many sick. But when anyone they heal, they replace it with another sickness. And they make the person twice a, 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 a captive of the devil. Because when the devil gives with one hand, he takes with the other hand. So Jesus desired authority and he paid the price for authority. In the price of authority, a man cannot receive authority without obedience. Imagine what the centurion said to Jesus. He said, for I am a man under authority. And yet, any man I say, any of my servants I say, I say to my servant, go here and he goes. Do this and he do. The, the servant listen to him and yet he also listens to his own commander. The commander also has the one he also listens to. Either directly from Caesar. So, they, they don't break their ranks. You can't walk in authority if you also are not under authority. No man can walk in authority if he himself is not under authority. Under whose authority are you? Jesus was under the authority of the Father. So in John chapter 5 verse 30, he, he, he said very clearly, as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is true. In the first series of this message, I, I had quoted Matthew 5 30 on this. I, I, I had John in the mind, but I was, my mouth was saying Matthew. So I'm correcting it now. In John 5 30, Jesus said, As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is true. He was also always hearing from the Father. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Who being in the form of God, yet he was always listening to the Father. And you that is nothing, we want to do destiny without listening to the Father. 
Jesus in the form of God according to Philippians chapter 2. He, he did not struggle for showmanship. He did not struggle with the authority because he was under authority. He says, it is written of me in the volume of the books I have come to do your will, O God. Authority is our driving force. Love is our driving force. Fellowship is a driving force. Fellowship. Fellowship. How can you stay a whole day without talking to your wife on the phone? Have you seen a man that will stay a whole day without talking to his wife? Imagine how worried the wife will be. I know men that are far off and their wives are far off every day, but yet they communicate. They communicate. Communication. The communication line is not broken. How can you say you're in love with God, yet you don't hear from God, yet you don't speak to God? I've told us severally, for those of us that follow our messages, you hear from God through studying the word of God. You talk to God through praying. How do you hear from God? From reading his word, meditating on the word, and how do you speak to God through prayer? You keep the communication line alive. Fellowship with the Father. You lock yourself up. You're not just asking God to give you things. You're just fellowshipping, worshipping, loving on Him. Loving on Him. And then virtue begins to drop in your spirit. Virtue begins to drop in your spirit. Conformity begins to be born. Because as we behold, as in a glass, we are changed into that very image. From one level of glory to another. We get, we keep getting transformed. Many people will never get transformed because they don't come. 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 They don't come to the presence of God. They don't come to fellowship with God. That's why the old man is still as it has been. Many people say, oh, man of God, how do I break this yoke of walking in the flesh? How can I kill the passions of the flesh? How can I do this? How can I do that? How can I serve God? How can I break the yoke of uh, the, 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 the addiction of masturbation? Some say, how can I break the addiction of fornication? How can I break the yoke of stealing? It is simple. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit is the answer. And you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Rewards, which is the final, is also a master driving force. In Hebrews chapter 12, he was said very clearly of the Christ. He said, looking unto Jesus. We are looking unto Jesus. Now I've explained how Jesus ran. Now we are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him and he the cross, despised in the shame and he sat down at the right hand of God for the joy that was set before there is a joy that is set before me i don't know the joy that is set before you but the joy that is set before me is what paul said to the church in philippians said to the church in corinthians that this mortality will put on immortality and we will be swallowed up by life and we will be changed our five bodies will put on the incorruptible according to philippians chapter 3 and the last verse he will transform us into that very glory that he has what a promise he said for the joy that was set before me. this is the joy that is set before us Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is even able to subdue all things under himself who shall change our vile bodies this is a promise of a reward of a reward how we will sit upon thrones with him, judging over the trials. The rewards are in excess. The rewards are in excess. The rewards are in excess. In our next series, I'll focus more on rewards. And I'll tell us so much about rewards. Rewards drove Jesus. If rewards drove Jesus, rewards also is driving me. And I'm not ashamed to say rewards is also driving me. Love is driving me. Fellowship is driving me. Authority is driving me. Rewards is also driving me. And the reward I'm talking about is not bread and butter. It's not a homage. It's not a skyscraper. All the beautiful buildings in Ukraine. What do you say about them today? 
all the industries the banks the hospitals they are all in ruins that's the destiny of this present age everything you see is going to be faded everything will be wiped away and behold a new heaven and a new earth coming so jesus said lay not your treasures upon the earth we are moths and canker worms dot but lay your treasures in heaven that's where my treasure is there are many rewards are waiting for me there are uh, many rewards are waiting me in the zion that is to come now you are blessed by this eternal word from god almighty for more anointed audio messages from apostle christian woke visit us at www.gagsermons.com or send us a message on whatsapp with plus two three four seven oh three two four six nine three six oh god bless you